forgot that. <laughs> I know. But Big Shep and others are out there to correct us and help us keep us online. We appreciate that. Uh, the Sacramento Kings have a new Summer League MVP in Keegan Murray. He's going to be a huge part of the Kings. But Kings are looking to add more and get some more depth and some other faces to uh, potentially help up this franchise. And the voice of the UC Davis Aggies, Scott Marsh, is joining us now. Scott's in studio. <laughs> yes. I'm in my home studio. Dave's on vacation. <laughs> Scott, what world are we in now? This is all bizarre stuff right now. It is completely turned upside down. No question <laughs> about that. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I've enjoyed listening to you guys on my way in, and you guys are holding down the fort, doing a fantastic job with uh, Dave, who I believe is out for the 37th consecutive day now. Yeah, he's got, the, he's got the Cal Ripken streak going <laughs> in, in another way. Uh, Scott, uh, we Jay was mentioning yesterday we were anticipating maybe you being in the outfield catching some of the home runs oh, at Dodger Stadium yesterday. What happened? Don't rub salt into that <laughs> wound, please. Yes, it was my hope, expectation that I was going to be at the All-Star game today, and it kind of fell through at the last minute. So if there's any consolation, I'm here with you guys. Eh. I'm not going to say it's a small one, but it's pretty it's, darn small, actually. It's pretty small. Yeah. It's pretty small. It's pretty granular. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, you have been the voice of the Aggies for a long, long time, called yes. uh, many great things, many great teams in football and basketball, but also individuals. What can you tell us about uh, the Kings' latest signing, which is really cool that, for one, that a UC Davis Aggie in Chima has a chance to be a member of the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, it's fantastic. And everybody around Aggie land is so excited for Chima. And this is a kid who just believed in himself. You know, when he was at UC Davis, he believed he was going to be in the NBA. And of course, after he graduated from there, he went overseas for a few years, but he never lost the belief that he was going to get back to the NBA. He had a lot of friends in the NBA. He was born in Nigeria, moved to Australia, came over, just a, a great story, but was good friends with Dante Exum. And so when Dante was with hmm. the Utah Jazz, he would come to a lot of Kings games and I'd always see him there, of course, doing the you know game night show. And he'd always come up to me and say, I'm going to play on this floor one night. You know, and, awesome. and talking to assistant coach John Ometzger Jones, he posted on his social site uh, a text that uh, uh, Chima had sent him. And it, it said flat out, uh, by the time I'm 27, I will be playing in the NBA. Screenshot that. So, wow. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. And, so it's great to see a, 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 a true dream come fulfilled here. Yeah. And everybody's got a different path. Obviously, he's not a lottery pick. He's not drafted. He's had to work to do this and was a really good college player. But there's yeah. a lot of really good college players, Scott, and you sure. know that. So that next jump is significant. And chasing the dream, I mean, there's so much admiration I have for that. Like, he could have stopped. He could have given yep. up. But he's he's chased it and just the reality of being in a Kings camp. Now, I don't know where he's going to fit sure. in. But tell us about the player. What are what are the Kings getting in a guy? Again, he's on the fringe of the roster, but he's he's got a shot. Yeah, no doubt. So this is what's so interesting because at UC Davis, of course, I mean, being at 6'6", he could jump out of the gym right? So he was playing the five, four inside a lot. He oh, was wow. the most dominant big man in the league at his size. Nobody could contain him or keep him off the glass. I mean, he was literally a Moses Malone type player in wow. terms of just missing shots, getting rebounds, putting them back up and in. He was a double, double machine. Um, but his weaknesses at that point were three point shooting and defense. And mm. if anybody knows anything about the UC Davis program and of course, former player Jim Les with the Kings as well, is that he demands defense out of his players. So there was always a little bit of tension there uh, with coach Les and Chim on the defensive side because they wanted more out of him. They knew how good he was. And, uh, you know, that was the one thing that uh, might have held him back. But, you know, in all reports, listening to coach Brown and, and coaching with the Nigerian national team, they're praising the defense and how hard he's been working. And certainly at six, six, he'll, he'll serve a much different role in the NBA. He's always had the speed athleticism, the, the play to two or the, the three, which was, I would anticipate would be his natural NBA position, but it's certainly a transition from where he was back in his college days. Yeah. From the four or five to that two, three, I mean, it's a big change and you can see how he could dominate maybe at, at that position. If, if people just couldn't handle his, his motor, um, but I think you referenced the Nigerian national team. That's obviously the connection yeah. with Coach Brown. And I think familiarity probably gives him his best chance to to make his impact on this team. Well, no question about that. Mike Brown obviously likes him and Jordy Fernandez and the crew that uh, coached that Nigerian national team. And I'm sure to some extent there's some loyalty there, right? Uh, you know, they, they know Chima and they, they like him probably as much as a person as a player. So they're giving him this opportunity. But certainly... Uh, the opportunity would not be there if they didn't feel there was a real, real possibility that, that Chima could help the organization. 
I know he was on the team, if I'm right, Scott, when you guys went to the tournament and took on yes. Kansas. So, yes. okay, that's that's a jump in talent. How did he do? You know, the Aggies were hanging with Kansas for a while in that game, but how did he do individually out there? Yes, you know, the Aggies had the lead throughout a good portion of that first half. Obviously, it slipped away as, you know, a lot of those 116 matchups have a tendency to do. But to put it in perspective, because I went back and I looked at that box score from that game. So Kansas, in their starting five, you can appreciate this because they had a couple of Kings players on the roster. So Frank Mason was the starting point guard. Josh Jackson was their starting uh -huh. forward. Steve McKayluke was their outside shooter. And Devontae mm. Graham was on the team also. Oh, my gosh. You know, they were loaded in their center. Ajabuke, I believe it was at the time, might have been a different seven-footer, was not playing because he was injured, but he was a surefire lottery pick. So that's the the type of firepower that, that Kansas brought that year. But uh, Chima played extremely well against them. And, and some people thought that maybe Chima was the best athlete on the floor that day, you know, mm. several years ago. So it puts it in perspective of where Chima's athleticism was at that point in time. So he's uh, has a shot. He's on the Kings or at least, you know, gets a camp invite. We'll see where that goes. Just Scott, overall, too, you've you watched the Kings. You do the game night. You're covering the Kings all the time. Um, where are you on the excitement meter here for the Kings going in? Because we've been down this road before where people yeah. get excited. Then you see the team win 28 to 32 games, and it's just dis dis disappointing. Sure. But what do you think about the offseason moves and where the Kings are heading into the next season? Well, it certainly feels like every move that's been made is logical. Uh, it's pushed the team forward, in my estimation, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the upcoming season. It was it was interesting because there was another – uh, social media post. I believe it was Chima having dinner with Keegan last mm. night. So uh, interesting, the two of them getting to know each other a little bit. But you've already touched on Keegan and how amazing he's been in Summer League, and you were down there to witness it firsthand. Uh, this guy, he he just is another person who looks like who's been in the league for five years. And we've seen this with Tyrese, right? He was mm -hmm. mature beyond his years. Keegan has that feel. And uh, I'm not sure there's not any one aspect of his game that's not already polished. Um, and I know we're watching Summer League and you don't necessarily um, look a lot into that because you got to consider, of course, the caliber of competition. But uh, he just seems like a guy who's going to fit in in any role in any situation. Yeah, I agree. And I think he's also going to be the guy that plays better with better people around him. Too. Yeah. I think he can just morph into that, which is going to be going to be fun to see uh jay mars did you you were talking earlier we it's perfect time to bring scott in on this because you you were on a quest to find jim less rookie cards but you found <laughs> something else what did you find so, of jim less this is what we do yeah. when dave's gone me yes. and jason I have segments it. on basketball and baseball cards yes and what we want to find <laughs> so i'm on ebay and i find this like set of six jim less utah jazz yes. rookie cards okay that i'm definitely considered buying okay but i come across another thing for 500 dollars. that's a yep. jim less item that i never thought i'd come across okay it's his actual game worn Utah Jazz rookie jersey. Someone <laughs> has that up on eBay, Jason and Scott, for five hundred dollars. Is it Jibless? It's it's not. <laughs> Unless, but if it is, he has a really good seller rate on eBay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna do it, aren't you, Jay? I haven't like made a really like can't go home and explain oh. this to my significant other purchase. We'll have to call coach and see if he has any other of those jerseys i was gonna to help you out with. i was gonna say because i'm looking at it, i'm like <laughs> man this is intriguing right yeah. now Absolutely. we've got a lot of fans of jim less right here on this show between yeah. scott myself oh, and yeah. jay mars yeah, like the fans. biggest jim less fan yeah yeah i when i was a kid i had a jim less shrine in my room so wow that is good to know jay we will have to set up a meet and greet <laughs> i was gonna say jim we that was my do that my first favorite player in the NBA was Jim wow. Les because the first Kings okay. game I ever went to in 90 or 91, yeah. like dating myself here, he hit like five threes, which, you know, in yeah. the NBA now you hit five threes. That's sure. kind of a thing. Yeah. In 1990, if you were hitting right. five threes in that's one game, you were a god. <laughs> yes. Well, he won the percentage title. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was that year. It might have been a different year. And then he finished second also in the three-point competition to Craig Hodges. Yes. Remember him missing that one in the corner. The ball at the end. He still talks about it all the time. <laughs> Tell me about it. You know, the funny thing about Coach Les, we go back a long ways. Obviously, I've been covering the Aggies. And uh, it was great since he's come back to the team when his son was on the team as well, coming to coach for the – he's in his 12th year now. But when we were covering King's training camp, they were at the rec hall. It was called at UC Davis at the time yeah, back in the right. early 90s. And as a student, I was covering Jim Les as a player for the Kings. And so I got to know him way back mm -hmm. when. And, of course, Jason was out at UC Davis as well. He remembers those days when, when the Kings had their training camp at UC yeah. Davis. Wow. Lots of fun. For sure. 
Yeah, I, I'm thinking, um, Scott, you, when you're a shooter like Jim Les was, you, you never lose it. Does he win shooting competitions? Oh, at all? yeah. There's a lot of free throw competitions amongst the players. And of course, they always finish practice with the half court shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say Coach Les makes it more than most of the players do to finish the, the sessions before a game or all of that. Of course, there's some of the players making it too, but you know, Jim, Jim Les still has his shot. Is there any other, do they ever have any fun challenges during practice? Like, does anyone ever try to challenge coach Les and Hey, you lose a three point contest to him. It's, it's wind sprints or something. <laughs> I don't see them running so much, but there are players challenging him. I, I know that there's, there's guys who still want a piece of the coach for wow. sure. Um, I have to go back real quickly to what you guys were talking about. Cause the conversation was so good. So, Terry Tyler in that oh, dunk yeah. contest. I have to say, as a high school student, I went to the Terry Tyler basketball camp. Really? At where American River College. Okay. Wow. And it was great. It was like the first season the Kings were here in 86 or whatever. I was a freshman in high school. And uh, anyway, so. Was he teaching you how to dunk? <laughs> yeah. I'd still be at that camp if that yeah. were the case, Jason. Um, <laughs> but the coolest part about it was is that Terry Tyler uh, was very good friends with Julius Irving. Really? And so, oh, wow. unannounced, unexpected, the doctor showed up at oh, Terry Tyler's gosh. camp. And so, they took all the campers into one of the classrooms, and they showed the video of Dr. J. You know, it's the longtime announcer, Julius, the doctor. Yeah. Thing. And then they bring us back into uh, the gym, and, and Dr. J is in his Sixers, you know, uniform. And he challenges one person to a game of one and one one of the campers. And it's a memory, of course, I'll never forget. I mean, Terry Tyler probably dunked it 300 times. That's fine. That's great. But it was Dr. J. <laughs> Were you the camper? The camp. I was not the camper. Uh, and I'm still upset about it. Did you get a picture with him at least? I don't have a, I have a picture of the camp, but I don't have an individual photo with Dr. Oh, J, unfortunately. Man. That would be great. But the, the one photo I really wanted was when I interviewed Michael Jordan. It was my first year working at the station. The Bulls were in their 70 win season or 72 win season, right? They were working out at Arco uh, Sunday morning. I was the only one covering it. There was one cameraman out there. And so I got to talk to MJ for about five minutes, just solo interview, getting cuts. They didn't want my interview, but they wanted his voice, right? We're sending it out nationally. The camera guy came up to me and said, I've got a great picture of you and MJ together with your mic with MJ. Long story short, all season long, asking the guy for the photo at the end, he said, you know what, uh, the, the tape actually got, eaten up in the machine oh. as i was trying to take it off i don't have He's that video <laughs> i'm still mad about that i would be too yeah still ticked oh man so. i just picture you at the dr j camp that oh. campers going one-on-one -on -one with dr j meanwhile scott's on the other court battling terry tyler one -on -one. <laughs> it's like bring it tyler and that would have been the only two people on that side of the court too <laughs> but terry tyler could dunk he, oh no he, was he a great could dunker. down yeah yeah he was great that's awesome. Well, Scott, uh, thank you for joining us. So Kings fans, I mean, we don't know. I, I wish the best of luck for Chima. Obviously, he's on the, the fringe of this, but I mean, chasing yeah. a dream. That's so awesome. Well, if there's one thing about it, Chima believes in himself. He's going to do that's absolutely good. everything, right? And even if mm -hmm. he ends up with Stockton, right, he's got an opportunity here. And, uh, you know, that's when about. you have that kind of belief, you just seem to find a way to make it happen for sure. That's awesome. All right. That's Scott Marsh joining us. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate that. We talk about the Derby again. Another successful show. Last night.